Alicia Powell with the Gateway Pundit, and we're here with CNN whistleblower, Carrie Porch. Carrie, how are you? I'm great, Alicia. Thanks for asking. How have you guys been doing over there? Oh, uh, just kind of fascinated by this undercover journey you had at fake news, notoriously fake news CNN. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully after this, they can return to their greatness, which was, you know, one of my two original goals that, you know, I had for the network when we started down this path. Well, uh, as a conservative uh, news consumer for a long time, I never found CNN to be centrist. I always found it being very left wing, very uh, liberal in their reporting or pro Democrat in their reporting. Tell us about what it was like when you first went undercover at CNN, when you first went to James O'Keefe and decided to wear the hidden camera. I mean, uh, as some of the tapes may have said, and I don't know how many of your readers and listeners have either seen them or know the story or don't, but uh, just to back it up from the beginning. So I got to, I accepted the offer to be a contractor for CNN and the Washington Bureau in June of 17. So, all the way up from June until obviously a couple weeks ago, middle of October, you know, that was my employment there at the DC Bureau. Now the funny part I think was- you got cut off. Did you say since June, 2017? Yes, June 2017 was when I, when I originally moved to DC to take the job at CNN. Um, and all the way up until June 17, until the story broke a couple weeks ago, middle of October, you know, that was my employment uh, there in DC. Um, and the funny and what part, were you were you excited to work at CNN? Was that like your dream? Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a total dream job, you know, working at uh, one of the most recognizable places in the world. And, you know, at the time I was a registered Democrat. I was a Bernie bro campaign for him in the 16 election. So, I mean, I thought I was going there to, you know, speak truth to power and take the news to the people and fight the system and resist and do everything like that. So, yeah, it was definitely my dream job at the time. And, but isn't uh, that what you kind of were doing at CNN or what they were doing, kind of just working with the Democrats? I mean, it definitely seemed that way at a time or two. Um, I, even though I was on the left at the time, you know, I definitely wanted at my point of view at that time was, um, you know, Trump's going to hang himself. We don't need to tip the scale in any way, shape or form. He's going to do it for us. Um, but the more I listened, um, some of your readers will go to, to the Veritas link and click the tapes themselves. But the 9 a.m. rundown calls, I started hearing those even in the first week. I just didn't know what they were. So all I knew was that someone had this call on every day or every other day. And I didn't know who it was, but I knew it was someone important because they were on every day basically telling the business to go left, right, or to go in this direction or that direction. However, what I noticed within the first few weeks was this ominous voice on the box, like a Charlie's Angel type thing was starting to tell the business to, you know, go this way or this way, or we need to cover it in this particular light to, you know, make Trump look bad or highlight this folly or that or something. And that really kind of raised my antenna a little bit. Again, my, to go back to my previous sentiment, I thought like, well, you know, Trump's going to mess it up for himself. We don't need to help him. And besides, that's not journalism, at least in my point of view. So I just started kind of um, just looking around, doing my own research, listening more. And the more and more I listened and started kind of doing my own research and uh, going down this rabbit hole or that rabbit hole, just other sources, independent sources that weren't beholden to this corporate, uh, corporate entity or that one. It just, it really started to open my eyes and, you know, it started to shift everything. So what was it like, what's it like at CNN right after President Trump comes out and says, CNN is fake news, it's fake news, it's fake news. What's the environment like? And are you thinking, yeah, it is fake news. Well, I mean, uh, first of all, let's be fair that um, I've said it a couple times, but again, for people that may not have heard it, that the people at CNN, the people on those tapes are extremely good people, hardworking, talented, and I never want to take away from their work. It's just, as you see on some of the tapes, a lot of the veterans, they loved it when it truly was like a center of the road, unbiased, just straight news organization. And uh, they just kind of feel handcuffed from Zucker and the other people on high. Um, I, when, when Trump came out at that press conference and uh, told Jim Acosta, I believe it was that day, like, uh, you know, that you are fake news and then started this whole roller coaster, I hadn't quite gotten to CNN yet. Uh, keep in mind at that time, I was still highly on the left 
And so it's definitely funny how things uh, turn out um, down the road. It's, it's pretty interesting to see. Yeah. Now, these 9 a.m. phone calls, were they toward, uh, issued to the whole staff? Was it just like for a certain shows? Would everyone that works at CNN be required to phone in and listen to this conference call? Tell us more, elaborate a little bit more on what these phone calls were like. Or sure, of course. The, uh, the 9 a.m. rundowns, as they're called, the rundown meetings, were, um, from my understanding, they were pretty much available to anyone that wanted to dial in. I'm sure, I mean, obviously I can't speak from personal knowledge, but I can only assume that, you know, like the producers and above and senior executives had to dial in every day just to get a beat on the business. But and anyone that had the number and access code could dial in. And, uh, you know, I was kind of a low, I was a really low guy in the organization, but, you know, it was an open bay cubicle system. I was on the 11th floor and there was always someone in some part of the floor that either had it on speakerphone or, or something like that. So it was always displaying multiple times a week, maybe not every day, but someone would always have it on at least a few times a week that anyone could just walk by in here or just sit in a desk and, and here it goes like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Or, whoa, what was that? Okay, no, I'm just go back to my computer, whatever. But it was, it was no tightly kept secret. I mean, most everybody had the, the code as how, how I was able to get on it. What are some of the, 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 the beginning when you started to feel like things weren't right? Was it these 9 a.m. calls where you hear Jeff Zucker, the president of CNN, telling the staff to focus on impeachment no matter what the case is? What are, what are maybe the top two or three instances where you're like, just things are not right. I'm, I'm a liberal, but this is too much. Or I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter, but this is too much. I just don't feel right about working here. When did that start to happen? Sure. I mean, there was multiple little, I call them grains of rice, that kind of led to the tipping of the scale. Um, at first, I started hearing little things here and there that, you know, hey, let's, as I said before, let's cover the story this, slide, this way or that way to cast the president or Republicans in a certain light. And I thought that was obviously kind of weird because I, I always, I always like to pride myself in a seeker of truth, like whatever the facts are, let's kind of get them out and then go from there. So even though I didn't like the president, I just thought that was kind of weird that a major media company would be trying to kind of tip the scale. Um, so I just wanted that kept my antenna up a little bit. Uh, the main one for me that kind of really set me down a, a pathway to kind of research things for myself, Alicia, was, um, the, you know, the Charlottesville riot, the, what's it called, the Unite to Right rally down in Charlottesville, Virginia, you know, where it got crazy and, and a lady died and everything. I was one of the team that was boots on ground that were helping cover that story. You know, I was in the truck doing what I could do to help out the engineers get it on air. And we all know, <clears throat> excuse me, that infamous speech where I think it was a press conference a couple of days after the fact, where you know everyone was asking him to denounce the white supremacists and Nazis and everything like that, in which he clearly did. Like, hey, I'm not talking about you know the good people on both sides argument that is repeated ad nauseum now. The difference is the good people on both sides, and people can look at the full transcript. I believe it was a paragraph later or before that, where he's like, hey, I'm not talking about the neo Nazis and the white supremacists, and like they should be condemned totally. And um, you know, I heard that. I was like, okay, that makes sense. I don't. Again, I didn't like Trump, and I'm like, okay, at least you said it. Um, but then I saw my outlet and a bunch of others just run with the whole good people on both sides argument without the full context of the speech. And then, we, and even Biden used that in his coming out campaign ad, and even what, two years later, roughly. So, I mean, that really kind of set me at least opened my mind enough to be open to other information that I may not have been getting where I was at. And were you starting beginning? Did that lead you to start maybe supporting, becoming more supportive of Donald Trump? No, not at that time. I mean, I didn't start um, becoming uh, back to the center right or even a conservative politically until probably about about a year ago. So during, but during that time, the Charlottesville that opened my eyes or at least raised my antenna enough to start asking some questions from some you know, some conservative friends I had for years, but I knew I could call these people and just ask them like, hey, what's, what's the point of view? What am I missing here that maybe the media is not seeing? And to their credit, a lot of these conservative friends or even libertarian friends were some of the only ones to sit down and have a conversation with me, whether online or at a coffee shop or over some beers without, you know, screeching into the wind and being offended about everything. So 
um, I credit some of my longtime friends that obviously want to remain nameless, but were able to kind of sit there and answer the tough questions I had as a uh, as a leftist and everything to really kind of challenge what I've been fed over the last few years, especially during the 2016 just gruesome election cycle that you know will go down in history. So uh, again, I just started kind of pulling that thread and going uh, down videos and articles that I wasn't being fed in the mainstream media. Um, definitely some of I mean, I've always been a fan of Gateway Pundit, so I was reading some of your stuff as well, and others like, you know, your Crowders, your Jimmy Doors, um, even Kyle Kalinske is another thing like that were kind of helping me kind of sift through some of the misinformation and disinformation out there. So it's been a long journey, especially coming from, you know, far left Democrats, uh, registered campaigning for Bernie to two and a half years, almost three years later to you know, being a, uh, pulling the lever for Trump. So it's, imagine that whole arc of a journey, of a mental journey so, has been insane. Walk us back. So you go to CPAC 2016, sorry, CPAC last uh, this, year, this year, 2019. 2019. And you are there covering it? Mm -hmm. I was there working it. And, um, you know, just one of those things that it fell in the, in the place where I and was- And you're thinking, oh, I can't stand working here anymore. I want to do something about it. This is unjust. There's too much. What's going on in your mind that m propels you to reach out to James O'Keefe? So I wish I, I wish it could be some heroic motive or anything like that. But uh, so this this time at CPAC, it's February or March of this year, 2019. So I'm pretty much pretty much fully red pilled at this time. You know, having to conceal my true beliefs and you know they my ideological shifts and everything, but. Uh, you know, fully red pilled. Well, I'd say mostly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fully kind of changed. There's my, more to learn. Yeah, okay. there's a, there's always more always more to learn. But I'm definitely on that pathway. But um, you know, and in that time, it's probably been about a year or so into the whole like now I'm seeing how the machine's operating, and it's just making me lose sleep and just kind of like oh my god, we're we're purporting to be you know facts first, the center center of the road organization, and it's clearly not. And that's one of the two things I wanted to happen. And, and I'll answer your question, I promise, was that one of two things was always my goal, either to have CNN, the organization, either own where it's at, like, hey, cool, we're left-leaning. Well, cool, oh, at least we know that now. Or to return to its greatness, the bastion of journalism that you see, you know, the people on tape talking about, like, hey, 20 years ago, this was the place to go. We did real news, and now we just cover Trump. I mean, there's that conversation I've had ad nauseum with many people there, even not on tape, I just couldn't get it. But they all feel the same way that even the ones that don't like Trump or Republicans or whatever, that, that's fine. But then even they are like, why are we covering him all the time? This is BS. There's plenty more things out there that are newsworthy than, than a president. You know yeah, we also saw from your undercover uh, investigation, your undercover footage, how CNN has is pretty much a racist narrative on how it covers shootings. And how it wants to, the, the, exact, the producers there want to ignore the crimes in the inner cities and only focus on when a white man's getting shot. That's what we've heard them basically profess. Yeah, and I know the one, I know the What were your thoughts on that? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not some, uh, you know, rabbit hole conspiracy theory. You can just take a look at any of the mass shootings and stuff. And obviously each one is horrible and we don't want them. But if you look at just the pure demographics i mean you have uh remember that sutherland springs the texas one where the shooter was taken out by an nra instructor you know that got buried as soon as that piece of information got out um the uh, youtube shooter you know the um i forget the the lady's name but she was i mean i don't know the correct term so forgive me if i get it wrong but like of middle eastern uh descent and that disappeared very very quickly once that was uh found out uh, i mean mashable even got caught um, whitening the sh her skin to look more like a white a white woman that uh, that carried out the shooting instead of what she was. So I mean I've seen it firsthand multiple times, but Lord knows if there's you know if there's a um, white male shooter, it's going to run for two or three weeks and everything. And again, it, each shooting is bad and everything, but let's give the same coverage to each atrocity versus just like picking and choosing based on you know uh, points of identity. Yeah, and and we also see. Democrats, in conjunction with the liberal media, which is CNN, uh, promote the Me Too, Too movement and um, come out and President Trump for uh, sexual harassment. All, the accusers are always featured on CNN, even if it's some lady who Donald Trump's never met. 
I was never seen 40 years ago. Now she's a senior citizen and claims, you know, Trump throwing the butt in the airplane. They're on CNN all the time, right? Well, yeah, they're just out. I mean, there's a lot of sexual harassment going on in the halls of CNN's headquarters too, as well. Uh, in, in, indeed, and that that fourth video was pretty uh, pretty intense as well. And and as we see, I mean, there was, I mean, that was uh, Jake Tapper's. I believe it's Jake Tapper's EP is executive producer that you know kind of spilled the beans on um, on Mr. Brusque, and you know it seemed pretty credible. And then we got other couple corroborations on it, like hey, you know, there's a girl that just got a job out of nowhere. Uh, that worked for this gentleman and and of course that's kind of gotten buried and no response no nothing but of course if it was a a fox or an oan or even a gateway pundit um producer at that level i mean it would have been wall-to-wall news so look what happened to roger ailes and bill yeah i mean it's it's, yeah it's insane and i mean obviously i definitely want people to be feel comfortable where they work and be able to step forward but i want that brush to be applied equally to both sides or, or all sides honestly like I mean, that was some pretty credible stuff on part four, at least I thought, even from a layman's perspective. But again, it's not mum's the word. So, but again, this, if that would have came out even six to eight months ago, who knows what would have happened? I just find the timing and the silence very interesting. You know what I'm saying? Did you observe brusque this behavior? With no, not per- no, not, not me personally and stuff. I've only spoken with the man a handful of times, um, but the general consensus when you know, when I was trying to uh, ask around about, has anyone heard like this type of behavior? Um, you know, most people are like, no, I personally haven't heard that, but it wouldn't surprise me. So that quote, it wouldn't surprise me. Like that question got answered so many times with that phrase exactly. So, you know, again, I don't have any personal knowledge of that, but you know, a lot of people familiar with the man way longer than I have seem to why have. Do you think that, why do you think there's that double standard though, right? We saw Bill O'Reilly off the air after 20, 30 years at Fox News with unsubstantiated uh, allegations of sexual harassment. Roger Ailes, you know, basically led to his death, getting fired at Fox News amid all these claims of sexual harassment. And yet, this guy, Steve Brusque at CNN, no repercussions. Do you think it's the audience that, that, you know, it's okay for CNN viewers that this is happening or CNN viewers not looking at your report? The executives don't care. Jake Tapper is walking away and just telling everyone to call the PR guy. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Well, I mean, first and foremost, foremost, Leash, I'm sure we can all agree that it, you know, that type of thing is never okay. You know, no matter what your political stripes are. Um, but it is interesting to see that it does seem to be pretty one-sided. Um, and that's kind of another one of those things that kind of led to my walking down the path and, you know, my own hashtag walk away moments, uh, so to speak. Is that I mean you have a, you know, a pretty high up person that says some pre- pretty credible stuff, and then of course you have another story from, um, you know, like Nick that was just saying like, hey, you know, I was up for this job, but this other lady got it. We were just the same qualified, and it just popped out of nowhere. Like there, there's definitely something there that just le- needs to at least be third party or independently investigated. Again, I mean these are some very powerful people that make or break people's careers with based on where they're at in the in the um, in the food chain. And yeah. I just want people you, to have a fair shake at whatever they're at. And of course, be safe at work. Did you notice this double standard before getting red pill, before be waking up? That No, no, I didn't. Conservatives uh, are held to a different standard than Republic, uh, liberals or Democrats? No, I, I didn't notice it because I was part of the machine, you know, up until I started working there and halfway through my employment there. So, I mean, when you're, when you're part of it, you really don't notice it. I mean, you, you're just a cog in a wheel. And uh, that was kind of the tough part for me was when I started kind of just, I mean, God, I hate the term, but like having my matrix moment, like, am I just going to, you know, take the blue pill and stay in stay asleep or stay inside the system? Or am I going to take the red one and just kind of see where this goes? And that, well, again, once I started pulling on that thread, it was, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't put the genie back in the bottle or, or pick whatever cliche that you wanted. And that's what kind of led me into down a downward spiral where, Oh my God, I'm part of the system. You know, I'm just putting news out there that millions of people take at face value as gospel that clearly has a a slant to it, but they're not owning it. Like when I watch Fox News, like I know I'm getting conservative viewpoints. Cool. If I watch MSNBC, like I know I'm getting a left or progressive point of view. Awesome. At least I know the lens at which I'm viewing these these outlets and I can kind of 
you know, pick and choose from there. Like, okay, I'm this kind of a conservative point of view. Here's a liberal point of view. I can kind of figure out the truth. But then I have CNN, again, one of the biggest viewerships out there, or at least it used to be. And again, even to this day, people think it's boom, gospel, truth, center of the road, rusted name and news. And then they're spreading a clearly left-leaning ideology. That's kind of where I have a problem with. Like, I think just you need to own where you're at and let people kind of figure out the facts for themselves with as unbiased coverage as you can get. That's kind of all I wanted to do. Last I checked, it seems like the folks at CNN just, they don't care about this uh, bombshell investigation. It's not a big deal. I mean, I'm sure it will just, they'll just let it go. No change of protocol there. Uh, do you think from what you know, is there any, is everyone shaken up by the report or they truly just not give it, give, care to have to care because uh, they're the established media. They don't have to change their ways and they can go on with their crooked reporting because their constituents aren't watching Gateway Pundit, they're not watching uh, Alex Jones or Fox News. So what difference does it make? Well, I mean, that they I can obviously see that mum is the word. I'm sure that's what their lawyers and their PR people are telling them to do, um, you know, because we haven't gotten a public comment from anybody uh, other than, you know, hey, call our PR department or even Steve Brusk himself. like, hey, thanks for calling, James. When O'Keefe called him, like, hey, thanks for calling. I'll get back to you. Um, Brusk was the only one that seemed at least interested in talking. And then from my understanding, that went away. So maybe they got to him. Um, I just found it very interesting that it is as silent as it is. And Fox and OAN and just some independent outlets are the only ones covering it. And none of the left leaning or, or mainstream, your NBCs, your ABCs. So uh, my theory is they're acting like a cartel, circling the wagons to protect each other. That being said, though, um, you know, the all of you collectively have, uh, we checked the analytics like last week and they were just over like, 80 approaching 90 million, who knows, possibly 100 million views on all the clips together and videos together. So it's out there in the public domain now. And that's even in the face of extreme uh, Twitter uh, suppression, trying to like, you know, we didn't even we didn't even trend until we reached 150, almost 200,000 tweets. When at the same time, the number one trending thing was getting like eight, nine, less than 10,000 tweets. So, I mean, there was some heavy suppression. So I credit all the patriots out there by getting that thing out and getting it out from under the hand, the heavy hand of big tech, what, the way it did. So again, the mainstream outlets aren't covering it, but we have, you know, almost a hundred million views. So it's out there for anyone to look at right now. So that's what we were wanting to do. We were just wanting to get it out there as far and wide and fast as possible. That way anyone can go online and look at like, you know, CNN bias or this bias or that bias. And even though it'll probably be a couple pages down, it's still there. So yeah. We'll see what happens. I mean, you were saying that, you know, everyone's the big constituents, but if you look at the Nielsen ratings, pretty much all of mainstream media is going down quarter over quarter viewership and independent media like you guys are actually rising in, in the viewership and the subscriber bases and everything like that. So think about that. That's why YouTube and Susan Wojcicki, Wojcicki, who I can't pronounce her name still, that's why she's trying to downvote or, or, or downgrade like in the outlets like yourselves and your Tim pools and stuff and try to prop up your Foxes, your CNNs, your MSNBCs. So there is a, a changing tide coming where someone like, like a Tim pool, for example, he got his, he got his thing. I don't know if you watch him, you know, I love Tim pool. You know, he got his mark when he did the drone coverage of uh, Occupy Wall Street. So I love donating to these people where I can throw a couple bucks here to each independent outlet just to keep them on the ground reporting news that is not tainted by some view of what, some big donor wants them to, to shoot it through. So there is a changing demographic and it's fun to watch the independent guys and girls kind of starting to get a leg up. Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's happening. Coincident. It's happening alongside president Trump speaking off the cuff, you know, yep. people are going to find different avenues of information. That's not so buttoned up and stiff and teleprompter read and just really there's more access to truth than ever before. Tell us about how CNN kind of selects presidential candidates to give a plat boost to and to ignore. Because um, you've got some undercover fo footage of some of your co work your former colleagues, talking about how Tulsi Gabbard is not, is, won't get enough footage coverage on CNN because she's too moderate on certain issues. Whereas, right, yeah. how could Biden, how could Biden, despite <laughs> all of his scandal, 
the, 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 the deals his sons made with Ukraine, which has launched an impeachment investigation against President Trump, impeachment inquiries against President Trump, even though they're the ones with the dirt in the Ukraine, Biden. How does right. that tell us about that whole controversy and what you caught I'm, on camera? Right, and, and that that whole thing, and it, that whole thing, it, we, all, we always, everyone always kind of thought it was there, but I'm glad that we caught some people on camera and now giving some credence to that theory where you can actually look at the data and it's like, okay, there's actually something to this, like the whole Tulsi thing and whatnot. Like, yeah, obviously the mainstream doesn't like her. I mean, I always say this and I may gain some friends and lose this, but like she was honestly one of the only, actually the only person on the Democratic stage that I would even consider voting for. You know, just keeping it real, because remember, she was, remember back when I was a Bernie bro, you know, she was kind of in the fold there. Um, so I'm so glad that we got that on tape and that, you know, Tulsi and her camp can hopefully do something with that. Because again, left, right or center, I don't care where someone lies. I just want them to have access to like the full plate of information, truthful information and to make their own decisions. That's one of the many beauties of America. Like we can vote and for whoever we want to about whatever cause, like I want you to vote for however you feel. I just want you to have an open access to that, for lack of a better, buffet of information. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's kind of, I was happy. To, I wasn't even trying to get that on tape. It just kind of came out. I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and of course you saw the last debate where she kind of went at, I believe it was Anderson and someone from the New York times where she was kind of pushing back. So um, you know, I hope that it does expose. Remember, they uh, Google shut her ads down after the first debate when she was the most Googled person after that. And just magically, they just shut her ads down. I'm like killing whatever momentum she was getting at the time. So, again, one of the many things I find very, very suspect and sketch. So, um, but yeah, the debate candidates. And again, uh, there was one, I believe, when uh, Andrew Yang, for example, got like raised more money than Beto or, or Cory Booker or something like that. And they left his name off of a, the top six graphic. Now, to be fair, like move news does move pretty fast. And like it may have just been an honest mistake. But after the second or third time when Yang <laughs> and company get left off of a pretty high graphic that outraised Beto or Cory Booker, whoever was at the time, it really has to kind of make you think like, what, dude, what's, what's going on here? And even Chalian, I don't, I don't know if you heard that tape, you know, the, the head political guy, he's like, do we need to take, uh, you know, he raised more money than what half the field. Do we need to take him serious? Or Zucker was like, do we need to take him seriously? And to Chalian's credit, he kind of pushed back like, well, we need to take all these people credibly, especially Yang who at the t on that tape raised like what, 10 or 15 million, uh, you know, millions more than, than even Biden at the time. So, um, I'm just a fan of bringing stuff to light and letting the data speak for itself. And that's exactly what that particular clip that you're talking about. Like, yeah, we don't like Tulsi. We're never going to give her the nomination. Like, cool. Glad we got that on tape. And the data actually kind of backs that up. I mean, from your perspective, besides Tulsi, who's the strongest candidate? And who do you think CNN is rooting for? Who do you think the CNN producers are trying to boost up? Is it Biden or Warren? Because they all look weak to us on the conservative side. Right. And I can only speak to where I was at the time I was and everything. So, you know, Biden was basically the propped up front runner for forever, even though Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren were out raising him like plethoras and stuff. And now Warren and, and, and uh, Sanders are kind of not neck and neck, but fairly close in fundraising dollars. But um, my point of view from the stuff I've heard, I think they're going to like really like to basically keep Warren in the front in the front running position. So, again, we'll see how the money talks and where, whether I'm right or wrong. But I do notice that a lot of people at CNN really like Warren. Again, I'd, I couldn't speak to any decision making or tipping the scale in that one regard. But I do notice that a lot of people there do really like Warren and we'll see if she becomes a front runner and stuff. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, what? What was your last day there like? <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm gonna get this footage out. This is an AM call this morning. Oh man! What was that like? <laughs> I mean, it, it <laughs> you know, was. No, you're gonna say goodbye to all your friends. Who tape recorded behind their back. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it was rough because I mean, these these were good people. They're still good people. They were my friends first for two years. You know, I didn't start wearing the camera until about five to seven months before two weeks ago. So, I mean, it definitely was very difficult and something I still deal with. And, you know, hopefully I'll get some good therapy out of it as well. I mean, it's, it's again, these are good people. The story had to be told, though. Like, it was bigger than all of us. 
And if it returns CNN to its greatness, great. If it returns to just being like, hey, we're left leaning, great. Like, again, those were my two, one of two goals. Again, the story was just bigger than all of us put together. Um, but my last day, it was, it was very intense because, you know, I knew when it was dropping. Um, you know, I knew exactly when it was dropping. And uh, you were on the 9 a.m. call, I think, yes. right? When the story dropped two hours later, or I think it, like, I know, 15 minutes later, Toss was going to go on with Alex Jones, and they were still, you were still in so, CNN. Yeah. So, so, um, if you, if you trace back O'Keefe's and Veritas's tweets, the timestamps, so I got the 9 a.m. call, and that was, I mean, I was definitely nervous because, you know, people knew what was coming in a few hours. They knew that Veritas was dropping dropping their next expose and we, we heard that call where Zucker's like hey you may have seen the Veritas tweets it's probably nothing even though he sounded very nervous about it you could hear it in his voice um but yeah I mean I, I was my heart was beating very very loudly um and I'm not gonna say anything derogatory about the the co-workers or anything like that but I mean I, I almost got blown on the call like because I was I, I was clearly nervous clearly sweating and I'm really surprised to this day that you know I wasn't found out but I uh, got the call, got the footage, uh, ran, took an extended bathroom break and, you know, met the, met the IT team out there, got it uploaded and just went back to work. And, um, you know, I got a text like, Hey, this, uh, 9 a.m. call is going out right now. And it's like 1130 at that time or 1145. And, uh, at that time I was like, well, time to go. So I just kind of gathered my stuff and, um, you know, kind of took an, I went to take an extended lunch and, you know, said bye to whoever I could and in, in as vague a way as I could. And I just left the building knowing that in a few minutes, um, it's going to be, the world's going to be changed forever. And part of me wishes you were there in 20, uh, 2016 to re know what these people really think of Crooked Hillary <laughs> while they're boosting her up. And part of me wishes you were still there getting more information, <laughs> heading into the next propaganda scheme CNN's working and get cooking up going into 2020. Why I mean, did you uh, decide to pull the plug on the operation? Um, uh, well, it was, well, it was a timing uh, issue. It was a timing issue because, um, you know, so it's on the GoFundMe and everything like that, that, uh, you know, my future wife and I are expecting a child in the new year. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Like we, we are, insanely excited scared anxious everything rolled into one so but it was one of those timing things like we were living in dc i was living less than a mile from work uh we were going broke i mean it, it's pretty bad when you make like you know close to 90k and you're and you're broke in a city and that's not living great that's just basically you know myself her i and, live in dc yeah so it was, okay i didn't know that you know exactly and i'm from new york so i yeah know so what you mean. Yeah, I mean, everyone's like, whoa, that, you make that much money. I'm like, trust me, it's it's not what it sounds like in a metropolitan area. And so uh, we lived, like I said, we lived less than a mile uh, from work down the A Street Corridor, which, as you know, is the new up and coming, you know, gentrified area and whatnot. Beautiful area. Um, but it's just we were running out of money and we were running out of time. And uh, we just decided to move elsewhere to be closer to family for when the baby uh, comes. And it's just one of those timing things. I, you know, I told James and the gang, like, look, this is what's going on. Um, there is now a finite end, end uh, timetable for this. And so we just kind of butted, uh, you know, met with the minds and melding of the minds. And we just made it happen on the negative time that we had. What's something else? You got fi about five months of footage, undercover footage, right? Yeah, roughly. There's got to be more that's not in the Project Veritas expose. Can you give I mean, us, like, tell us what happened? How does Zuck, Zucker really feel about see, uh, Hillary Clinton? Is having Zucker himself saying like, screw all this other stories, focus on impeachment. I mean, is that not enough for you people? Don't be greedy. Come on now. Well, yeah, <laughs> we actually want the corruption exposed and hung on the wall to dry. Right. Well, here's a, a shameless plug and stuff. It, it dovetails into what you're talking about, Alicia, that so the goal, um, just as I was motivated by after seeing the F Facebook insiders and the Pinterest insiders, that's kind of what led me to, you know, be just brave and stupid enough to go talk to James. There's a combination of both. I don't know if it's 50-50 or 70-30 on the stupidity side, 
but to just to have that, you know, that second of bravery, just go talk to these people and, and led me down that path. Just as I was motivated by these people, our goal is to motivate others inside, not only media or finance or anything like that to come forward if they see some malfeasance. So I'm not going to discuss what I know so far, but there, there may be other people in different industries or different outlets that might be w willing to, you know, help us out. So it's always tough to be the first one, but it's one of those things where if, if I can reach at least one, the way Facebook Insider reached me or Pinterest reached me, then we can just start a snowball and recruiting an army of undercover, undercover guerrilla journalists to basically blow the lid off of anything. And I'm even saying if you see, if people see some bad stuff at Fox or OAN or any, if there's some, if there's some clearly slanted stuff and some fake news going on, I don't care what letters are behind it. We, we want that out in the open. And that's some criticism I've gotten on Twitter. Like, why didn't you expose Fox? I'm like, well, I didn't work at Fox. I worked at CNN. I'd at least like to hope that I would have the same moral fiber to like do stuff at Fox as well. It's just, I can't stand anyone's finger on the scale that has access and influence over millions. That's kind of my, that's my biggest thing. And, and well, now, now, I mean, since you're, 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 you've been with the conservative media, the top dog in conservative media, right alongside Alex Jones, who's <laughs> racist. We're all <laughs> racist, right? You tune in to Don Lemon any time of the day, or I don't even watch CNN much anymore, but I used to a lot. Just because Back when they were news. left is up to. And yeah. all racist, 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 racist. That's the main thing we get from uh, left stream, left stream news. Is this true? You've been alongside of us, but you know, you've been hanging out with us for the past two weeks. You've been working on the conservative side. What do you say to the CNN viewers who say that ad infinitum? Yeah, I mean, I could say it's it's BS. And the funny part is that, you know, um, you know, before I torched my Facebook, you know, it brings up the things over, hey, do you remember this five years ago or three years ago? And it shows me doing the Bernie stuff or or at least engaging in these arguments uh -huh. on Facebook when I was a full blown leftist about someone that just had a disagreement with me and well, you're just a bigot and a racist and a homophobe. And I was always, you know, trotting out those those talking points that we know are now talking points like anyone does agree with you, Nazi bigot. So that's what you used to do too. Absolutely. And it just makes me cringe that I'm like, oh my God, I was that person. I was that screeching NPC for lack of a better term. But I mean, what really dis display, uh, dispelled all those rumors was even, um, cause remember I was on a YouTube journey following like a bunch of different people from different stripes. And I mean, and I got to meet like your Brandon Tatum's, your, your Rob Smith's and all these other, you know, like your black gay conservatives and everything like that. And like, no, none of these people are racist. Um, you know, like Coleon Noir or anything, like any of these people that I got to meet at, you know, or watch. I mean, CPAC actually really opened my mind where because everyone thinks that, uh, you know, the only Trump supporters are just, you know, old white men. And at CPAC, I mean, demographically, it's still a majority in this country. So most were, you know, white men and women, obviously. But then I saw a plethora, a true rainbow. You know, I saw a bunch of caucuses like Hispanics for Trump's or Blacks for Trump. I even saw a couple, you know, people with a sign trans for Trump. And I'm like, yeah, there were trans, lots of trans. I've never saw this many transgenders at CPAC than any other year. Yeah, I mean, that that blew my mind. And I take it you were there too. It's funny. I was. Like, oh, so that's so cool. We were there, just didn't know anybody. And now it's a funny time. Like, wow, this guy is in the audience. It's going to blow lid off everything. But yeah, so you know exactly where I'm talking about. And that blew my mind. And I mean, I was already pretty on my way to being red-pilled at that time, but just seeing that just truly just... <laughs> yeah, I think that this is the important part of the story too, which is waking up from the lies, the, the, the sleeping syndrome that you have in this political matrix when you're on the left and you're galvanized against conservatives without even ever maybe knowing any or really understanding the issues. How is your life different since you've had this um, paradigm shift? I guess thought you're not a Democrat anymore. You're probably going to vote for Trump. How has that impacted your well-being and, and your confidence? Well, I mean, confidence aside, it's impacted my well-being most of all because for the first time, uh, you know, my future wife and I were talking about it earlier today. Like we're we're now in an undisclosed location in Florida as our, as our new home, but it's like. So last night was the first time that in months that she and I have slept well. And it's just all the, not only just the, the double life I was leading, just the exhaustion, 
and just all the stuff from like my mental journey just and now that the story is out there alicia that's the biggest thing for me like um i now have a saying that i didn't mean to say but it just happens it's just come what may like whether i get you know sued into oblivion or or nothing happens but come what may the story's out there for the people to dissect it however they want to you know we did our we did our part to do what we can to protect the republic and pass the baton on to someone else but mainly I just feel at peace. And that's something credit to Eric Cochran, the Pinterest mm -hmm. insider was telling me that, Hey, leading up to the, the release, like hours before the day before, and even a few hours after, like you're going to feel like a sine wave of emotions from mountain peaks to low valleys and anywhere in between. But once it's out there, you'll just feel at peace. And that's what I was telling Owen Schroyer and his studio is that I do, I just feel at peace right now. Like I just don't care what happens. It's there this last eight, nine months has come to an end. The, the fruition of my work is out there now. You know, I've made some new friends. I've lost some old ones and, and it's sad. It's just, uh, uh, the story was bigger than all of us had to get out there and now it's out there. And now we'll just lead on into 20 and beyond and see what happens. But again, it's just confidence has gone up. I mean, obviously just like, I'm just happy to just have it out there. Now I'm trying to live just a normal life. If, if that's even allowed at this point, Can I go back into the news field. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not ruling anything out. Uh, I do, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not naive to think that I can ever work in like a mainstream outlet ever again, because it's, as you see, it's a pretty tight knit circle. I mean, you got almost a hundred million views and only two outlets really covered it. So um, I highly doubt that I'll ever work at NBC or ABC and let alone CNN. <laughs> I, may, I may just put an application out there just to see how quickly I'll get declined. Oh my but, God. Uh, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not ruling anything out. Like this has blown my mind and her mind about what has come into my inbox. It, it's mind blowing. I mean, uh, we'll, we're keeping everything open. I'll say that. And thankfully to patriots like yourself and your listeners, I mean, and the Veritas, I can't never not shout those guys out. You know, um, I made the GoFundMe. They advised me to like, Hey, make the GoFundMe. We'll push it with our friends and everything. Yeah. You've been flooded with support. I think I just saw you guys make the goal the same day you posted the GoFundMe for your. Pretty much. I mean, goals. pretty, pretty much Alicia. It was, it was 36 hours, went from zero to hundred K and everyone was trying to make us, uh, up the goal, go to two fifty or five. I'm like, no, we're not trying to get rich off this thing. We just want, you know, a cushion for us to go into the next year or two to have our baby before we, figure out the next move. And that's exactly what people did. And, um, you know, we're obviously working on a couple other options to kind of help out the people that may have been fired because of me. So that's are, they, are you still in contact with them? Uh, I've reached out a few times to uh, mul you know, multiple people to hear nothing back. I wasn't even trying to reach on common. I was like, Hey, I hope you're doing okay type thing. And I haven't heard anything back. So, I mean, I don't know if they're being directed or they just don't want to talk to me, which I can certainly empathize with both if that's the case. And that, that hurts, you know, because I mean, some of these people, a lot of these people were my friends, but I, I can certainly empathize with, with where they're coming from. Um, but we're working on something to possibly help those people out as well. And stay tuned and I'll definitely get in touch with you and, uh, and the gang if, uh, if and when that happens. But yeah, we're just trying to figure out our next move. Uh, thankfully, we've got a few dollars in, in the bank account to kind of buy us some time and we'll just go from there. Is this the end of the expose? Are we going to see any more chapters in the Project Veritas's release of your five months? I mean, five months. It's got to be more than just a few videos. Boy, you're getting greedy now. I love it. But... I, love it. I have watched <laughs> CNN do what it's doing for my entire adult life. because I've been paying attention. So it's warranted for us to see more video. Right. Well, I'm not going to stop. curious. Is there more coming? <laughs> I'm not going to step on James's toes or anyone there. Um, I trust the, I trust the editing team. So I'm kind of lobbying to get a few different clips put in there. But again, I, I trust, I trust the team. And, and again, let me just do a quick plug if you wouldn't mind is that again, remember I said I was motivated by the Facebook and Pinterest insiders. So we're looking for an army. Like if you, or you know, someone that's in a position of power or influence that you see some bad stuff going on, please go to projectveritas.com slash brave. It's secure emails, or if you want to even work for us, um, there is that option. We're always looking for people, for good people, whether to be full or part-time or spare time doing operations. They're always looking for good people. And as you see, James is a man of integrity. I mean, everything that man has told me has come to fruition. You know, he made it rel relatively easy to come forward because he said, hey, if you come forward, you know, we'll make sure 
that, you know, legally you're protected and this protected and we want to get the story out and they've done everything and they've been a blast to work with. And I promise anyone that hears this or reads this, if you know something and want to come forward, this is the place to do it. Absolutely. I mean, James O'Keefe and Project Veritas have really changed the game on so many issues over the years between Project Veritas and Judicial Watch. I yep. Oh, Tom Fitness. Tom, Tom Fitton is my jam too. That guy is amazing. Right? <laughs> Tommy Fitton. But um, <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things where, you know, 60 Minutes started their, started their career based on doing what James and company are doing, like undercover work, getting the truth out of people's not weakest moments, but true moments, if that makes sense. And that's what journalism should be is like, Hey, we're exposing some stuff that isn't quite lining up with what you're putting out in the public. And this, like, I finally feel like I was never a journalist at CNN. I was a back end guy, but doing this stuff has actually um, made me feel like a journalist. Like, Hey, you know, there's a story I was able to get it out there and who knows what will happen next. Your leftist liberal leading friends. Have you inspired them to take a second look at their political beliefs? Well, I mean, I'm I, I, saying, wow, I didn't think CNN was so crooked. I don't, didn't think I should be a conservative, but now I should be a conservative. Well, I mean, I, I, I hope so. And not that I'm trying to bring anyone over to my side. I mean, that's what we all want, but it's, it's not about sides for me. Um, I just want people to do what I did and at least have enough of an open mind to kind of look at other points of view with a, with a, with an open mind, not nearly a critical one, but just kind of hear, empathize and hear from another without shutting it down immediately. And the best thing that happened along those lines is uh, a dear friend of mine, I'm not going to mention his last name, but his name's Ryan, but a dear friend, old, one of my oldest friends, um, you know, we talked the other day finally, you know, cause I went dark after it for obvious reasons and then got a new phone number and I called him and he and I spoke and he's kind of left leaning personality, but still one of my best and dearest friends. And he said, basically one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. He's like, you know, like, you're my boy. I got you regardless. And man, I had no idea that it was slanted to that degree. Like CNN was his jam. Like he watched him every day and he knew I worked there and he knew my new political beliefs as well. But he's like, he's like, he's like, damn, Carrie, like I didn't realize it was that slanted. And it made me take a second look at all news that I'm consuming now. That's what I wanted to happen is for people Very to take a critical, critical eye toward whatever they're watching, Fox, CNN, whatever. Like Tim Pool said it best. He's like, fact check. Like, it's not enough to just, you can't just consume the news blindly. Now you have to, you know, read it, watch it, and then spend a couple minutes fact checking or, or doing your own research now. And that's a sad state of affairs, but that's where we're at. And the comment that my friend Ryan made to me made it as, as weird as it sounds made it all worth it. Like, cause I've had that conversation a few times, well, more than a few times after it, but that same sentiment, he was the first one to verbalize it to me instead of like a Facebook message or something like that, that it's now making me take a second look at all news that I consume. I'm like, that's, that's all I wanted right there. Right. Everyone should be critical thinkers and stop yep. inherited belief systems and start evaluating everything, evaluating everything that they believe on their own. Right. Instead of yep. say and follower, it's like you start being a follower when you're, everyone starts being followers around middle school. And yep. <laughs> Just stay like that. A lot of people. You're right. And then the, and, and, it's crazy. And, and sadly to think, you know, I mean, I, I consider myself, you know, at least halfway intelligent, but I was brainwashed and, and became a follower thinking that I was a leader, that I was just espousing these talking points that were cooked up in like some back room. So it's, 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 it's very funny how that works when you're kind of, that's what, when I debate leftists now, and I was a liberal once upon a time, okay. a long time ago. Okay. And you know, when they're defending, they think they're leading, like you said, which is just, espousing talking points verbatim why do you think it is what what was going on in your mind when you're espousing liberal talking points verbatim and you think that you're being a leader well i just it was like a dopamine hit for likes and and uh, virtue signaling and stuff like that like cool i mean even obama talked about it either yesterday or the day before i don't know if you saw that where even he finally stepped into the fray about this cancel culture and woke culture is basically bs where yeah, you're going to call someone out on Twitter or Facebook for not being 110% virtuous and like, Hey, I did this cool thing. And I got a couple dopamine hits and yeah, you go boy. And, but it's, 
that's not activism or that's not actually, you know, uh, igniting change. And it was really cool to see him come out with that. But it's the same thing I was doing. Like, like if I were to call someone out for issue X, Y, Z, you know, I'd feel really good about myself because I get a flood of likes on Facebook. Like, Oh, I'm doing the right thing. Rah, rah. rah. But in, in essence, I was looking back at those conversations via that time hop thing on Facebook, like just out of curiosity, I went back to some of those uh, threads like the, that started dumpster fires and I would go through these threads and I would just espouse the talking points. But then every time, not even a conservative, but even a centrist libertarian friend would come in with, you know, some logic, facts and reason. And then I would just, it's like, oh, you're just a bigot. You, if you don't understand, you're just part of the problem without even entertaining some valid points that they were bringing up. And it just, I look back at that now and it, it, it's embarrassing to me and it blows my mind that me thinking I'm at least somewhat intelligent couldn't at least recognize, hey, that's a valid point that we need to discuss, but then just dismiss it as you're just a bigot because you don't understand. And that was me. Like, and I felt good about myself doing that stuff all the time. But what's amazing about it is this experience could possibly, not only is it made you wake up from it, I mean, stop to use the lack of better words, wake up, but that right, is, right. Right? it's like waking up to, you see the light. The room has been black and you see a speck of light. Now the whole room has light and you can't, you can't ignore it. That's what it's all about. Just kind of being able to take in new sets of information and, and examine them. And, you know, again, the marketplace of ideas, it's a <laughs> kind of a right leaning or centrist talking point, but it's true. It's like, you know, the, the best answer to bad speech is more speech or hate speech is more speech, not censorship. How do you feel about Donald Trump in 2017 before you started working CNN and then CNN the experience there. How do you feel about him now? I mean, it, it's crazy because I tell my good friends all the time, like I went from a never Trumper uh, Bernie supporter to now pulling the lever being a Trump supporter in a span of like, uh, what, less than three years. And the biggest, funniest thing, my closest inner circle knew my journey as I was going. And my left-leaning friends were like, how in the hell could you go from Bernie to Trump in this amount of time? Like, what changed your mind? And I just say, well, working at CNN definitely made that happen. What did you think about him before and what do you think about him now? Oh, I hated Trump before, you know? Um, just absolutely hated him. I mean, so to full transparency, like, yeah, I, I campaigned and voted for Bernie in the primaries of the 16 election, but I didn't like Trump and I dang sure didn't like Hillary. So I voted Gary Johnson in the prime, in the, in the general side of the election. But to answer your question, I hated Trump before I got to the CNN and now I'm definitely, because he was a bigot, the racist, pompous. yeah. Yeah. Bigot, what racist, uh, homophobic, transphobic, like all those things were, what I thought he was and he's going to like wreck the country and he hates Brown people and all this other stuff. And then looking with a critical eye of like what's going on. I mean, the numbers of the economy don't lie. The immigration stats don't lie. Um, getting other kinds. I mean, when he probably the biggest thing that pulled my, like made me at least look at him twice was one of his first things pulling us out of TPP that blew my mind. Even when I was a raging leftist at the time, I was like, Whoa, okay. So then that kind of was one of those other grains of rice on the scale. But um, yeah, hated him at first. Now I'm a big fan. And now you're like, yeah, keep it yeah. up. Yeah. And now I want to, and now I want to do what I can, whether working on the campaign in some facet or fashion to, you know, help him get reelected. We got to help. We got to basically get this sham of an impeachment process over with and lead into 20 to hopefully get four more years. And that's kind of what, where I'm going now. That's amazing. That's an amazing transformation of thought that you have a whole paradigm shift is just Ooh, it's, it's been rough <laughs> it, it's <sighs> a transition and um it's just one of those things because that to me was the hardest part was confronting my previously held deeply held beliefs like this man is the antichrist type thing to now like maybe there's more to this and like oh my god there's yeah he's definitely not perfect but no one is but just seeing like all the stuff like uh, starting to expose the deep state and a lot of other uh, deeply held stuff uh, behind the scenes like it's just blowing my mind what's going on right now. So that's why I want to see it continue. Where'd you work before CNN? Um, I was uh, spent most of my uh, working career in, in some facet of telecom. Like I've worked for like, you know, AT&T, Verizon, uh, Sprint, T-Mobile. And then I spent uh, a combined over 10 years in the Navy doing civil engineering. Oh, so you're a veteran. Mm -hmm, I am. So this is your first real stint in the news. <laughs> my first and possibly last media job. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe not the last, but there's no, a whole either. there's a whole side of people who agree with you on on why you did what you did and how you feel about politics now. So it doesn't have to be the end yet. Well, I hope not. I mean, it's definitely I want to be in the fight in some way, shape, or form. Even after you know, because I I think that Trump will get reelected. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to have to do it. But even after Trump second term. I mean, it's something that I want to stay in the fight in some fashion here. Uh, this truly has um, awakened me that there's a whole type of culture war that's going on right now, and it's not going to go away. It's going to require some soldiers. So that's another reason we're trying to recruit people just to open their minds enough to see what's going on out there. Because it's, again, the, the fight's not going to go away. It's just going to get bigger and bigger. For sure. Thank you so much, Carrie, for uh, spending your time with us today and sharing your story. And no, no worries, Alicia. And, and thank you for yourself and uh, and Jim and the gang over there at GP. Like even when I, I was, I can't believe you're a fan of Gateway Pundit. Even back, oh, yes, back in the day when you. Yes, I, I I was because remember even even when I was a progressive and stuff like we were still kind of fighting the same fight in different ways and stuff like kind of expose trying one to expose just the deep state or some other things like that. So. There's definitely been some parallels. So again, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I definitely always have been a fan of yourself. And funny enough that, uh, you know, I was actually um, not always a fan of James O'Keefe, but I respected him. You know, he was taking down my people, but you can't argue with tape, you know? And uh, so I always respected him. And, but yeah, even, even GP back in the day, I was following and just like, huh, they got another one. All right, that'll work. Isn't it amazing you could be fighting the, for the wrong team on the wrong side in the wrong bunker and you have the right intentions you're well meaning but you're totally misguided right absolutely and it goes back to that the, the people at cnn and msn all those people like i've met some of these people in the trenches and the press pools they're all good people they just are kind of going toward a different goalpost, so to speak some of the people at the top especially aren't so good though Oh, yeah. I mean, that's one thing. And, and I don't know if you want to close or not, but that's one thing that uh, James and I talked about for the first few months when we were kind of feeling each other out was, you know, I don't want to make anyone look bad. That's not a bad guy or girl. And he's like, hey, and that's one thing he promised from day one. It's like, I will never make someone a villain that is not a true villain. And he did. He, he, he was true to his word. Patrick Davis, for instance, I mean, that man poured his heart out over a beer. Like I've been here 30 years and we used to be news and I hate where we are now. And, you right. know, I want to do journalism, but we can't because it's like, will CNN ever hire a Republic, like a, a conservative for real, or they like, they always put on the, the softest Republican, you know, the ones that placate to the left. When I, mean, I, hope so. I hope so. I noticed, I can't remember the person's name, but I, I remember they hired a, a, a Republican voice. Maybe it was in response to this story. Who knows? But I Googled this person. I was like, oh, this is kind of looks looks like a rhino. I could be wrong, but we'll see. But it's it's one of those things like, you know, Fox, for example, I mean, the five, at least they have like, you know, Juan Williams, a, a Democratic voice. Here's that dissenting voice on a panel that actually can hold their own, um, you know, but like you said, any any right leaning person or or so-called Republican that gets on CNN, you can tell they're just a Republican that has been recruited to set themselves on fire and, and trash talk the president or the conservative right. views. So, um, but again, uh, you and I, I think we were pretty toe to toe on that. We noticed that independent media is on the rise and mainstream is on the decline. Um, and while independent media is on the rise, there's the big tech censors yep. enforcing the censorship on the web. So we'll see how it goes, but it's definitely a fun time big to be fight. a and, and in the fight and and I can definitely just implore you and 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 uh, you know your team and everything just there are those of us out there even on the other side that are fans of you guys and all it's going to take is time and consistency and and we'll bring everybody over into the light not just the right but just you know to be able to open their minds and and kind of look at things as they are well I guess we won't be following you on Facebook or Twitter <laughs> yeah follow me on Twitter it's Carrie on Twitter yeah I, I did another I did a brand new one so just because they they told me to uh, to get one, it'll be easier for people to reach out and either tell me I'm a hero or go F and kill myself. One of the two is kind of funny, but I'm like, all right, whatever. So, um, you know, Rando's on Twitter. So any wisdom is greatly appreciated from, from your point of view on that one. I hope liberals <laughs> watch this and they get a eureka moment to start questioning what they think it is they know. I hope so. That's the goal. And, and watch. It, I mean, I and was, conservatives <laughs> too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want, I want them to... You know, it's, it's truth to power is like that. It's an old cliche saying, but that's what we should do. Truth to power, no matter who's in power. If you're if you're effing up, you need to be held accountable. And that's kind of 
all I'm trying to do. It just so happens the conservative side's more on the force of good and the leftist side's more on the force of evil. And I can say that clearly because I'm on a conservative leaning organization. <laughs> I'm not under the guise of being. It's like, and our, internet, and our internet goes down. <laughs> <laughs>